Welcome back. Well, 2017, just around the corner, Americans are feeling optimistic about their financial futures, apparently. 70% of those surveyed predict their finances will be better in 2017, according to the 8th Annual Fidelity Resolution Study. Joining us right now is Ken Hevert, the Senior Vice President for Retirement for Fidelity. Ken, good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Good morning. Tell us about the findings. Well, this is a great news uh, study again this year, as you pointed out. More uh, Americans are feeling better about the future, and uh, uh, we've seen a large increase in the number of people who are saying that they're in much better shape now than they were just a year ago. We started this survey eight years ago. We wanted to get a handle on whether or not Americans were taking control over the things that they can control coming out of the Great Recession. And in fact, we're seeing more Americans uh, resolving to get their financial houses in order. It does feel like sentiment has changed, doesn't it? Yes, it does. How yep. much? Yeah, and Ken, how much of that is the stock market being on a record-breaking run, particularly in the last several weeks? Well, there's no question that the state of the economy, uh, the stock market, the jobs economy, all factor into this. However, we're also seeing that as individuals become a lot more focused on the things they can control, whether it's paying off debt, spending less, or resolving to tackle their savings goals, that's also giving them confidence. In fact, what we found in the study is that those uh, individuals who kept their goal, accomplished most of it, are those who are the most optimistic. So simply setting a goal and trying to do something about it makes people feel good about their situation. Yeah, I, I think so, Ken. I mean, I think just the psychological aspect of this thing, people have more bounce in their step is what I've seen. They're more positive about the economy. Mm -hmm. And I think they're taking charge as opposed to feeling, you know, that, the, that they have no control over their future. But still cautious, right, Ken? I mean, as far as short-term uh, saving versus long-term saving, what right now should the average American be, uh, be planning for as far as that, the em emergency funds versus the long-term retirement? Well, everybody's situation is different, as, as we know, and we think the most important thing for people to do as they're trying to figure out what's the right goal, what's the right resolution, is you've got to know where you stand. So, for example, one of the things that we've seen is that as far as concerns go, yeah, there are definitely concerns. People are feeling better. And one of the areas people are, are more concerned about is uh, getting hit with an unexpected expense. And so the relationship between, you know, that concern and a uh, record high focus on building an emergency fund uh, make a lot of sense. So if you've already experienced in the past couple of years a setback because you had an unexpected expense, which as you know uh, can derail your long-term savings, it could force you to borrow more, those are the types of things that people are focusing on. On the other hand, if I feel like I've gotten through some of the short-term goals, I'm, I'm in a better situation and now it's time to turn up uh, my, uh, my long-term savings, retirement savings, for example, really peaked this year, uh, then that's the area that you should focus on. Top three goal areas were saving more, paying off debt, and spending less. Very consistent with the past eight years, but there's some changes underneath. So go through some of the top financial priorities uh, for people going into the new year then. The top three are save more, pay down debt, and spend less. That's pretty obvious. Hey, no question. It, it is very obvious. Um, you know, when it comes to saving more, we, we look at two different categories. We look at long-term and we look at short-term. More people are focused on long-term uh, savings goals than they are short-term. And when it comes to long-term, the primary focus has been on retirement savings. Uh, the second area that people are focused on is being able to uh, save up for a large purchase, uh, such, as a, such as a house. On the short-term savings goals, again, one of the areas that we saw really peak this year were customers who wanted to build up an emergency fund because they wanted to make sure they protected themselves against an unexpected expense. One of the things that I think is really interesting is if you look back over the past eight years, coming out of the Great Recession, people were really focused on putting the brakes on their spending, uh, really trying to get that in order, and as well as becoming a lot more aware of um, the, uh, the, the downside of having too much debt. Those are still popular, but they've actually trended down just a little bit. Yeah. So, so Ken, just real quick, what's the best tips on controlling expense? I mean, what would you advise me and others here on <laughs> how do you really control expense? You know, what's amazing is that you know this is something that's important at every every life stage, right? Whether you're just getting started, you're building up your your wealth and your nest egg, or you're getting ready uh, to to retire. And I think that the, the most important tip 
is to really understand what you're spending your money on. What are your expenses? Um, I can't tell you uh, how many times we hear from people, especially those that are, you know, starting to think about retiring. Right. That one of their biggest one of their biggest challenges is not knowing what their expenses are going to be, and then therefore how much money they're going to need yeah. in retirement. So. This whole idea of really getting focused on your expenses. Knowing what is you're key. doing. Yeah, knowing what you're doing. Ken, great advice. Thank you so much.